16th of October 2009, Pelican, Stapleford. Three remaining Rhine Tuck brothers Philip, Jim, and George. George what? Well, I'm just saying, it's the three remaining brothers. All three of you just having lunch together, aren't you? Yeah? Yeah, we're having lunch together. Yeah, if I may say so, not much left of us either. No. We're nearly, nearly there. And I haven't been the same since, uh, since I, I fell off the bus. Can I, can oh, I, something on your chin. Can I put on record that we're all going to do the marathon next year? Little, little, um, put, put, all put down £20,000, and the last one out collects a lot. When he goes. Yeah, do you think that's not too bad? Oh. Yeah. But, you know, I may be the youngest, but I'm not the fittest. You see, I think Philip and George will be here. After I'd be me. game for that if you put it down. Yeah, gonna... 20,000 each. <laughs> the winner takes a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Dear old Gran up the road. So he had chauffeuring, laundry, dry cleaning, and then his electrical and carpentry and building. Oh, yeah, yeah. Builders, decorators, upholsterers. He had 40 men working for him at one time, didn't he? 100. Yeah, 40, wasn't it? In the spring, sometimes you'd have 400 painters on. Did he? Yeah, because they used to do a whole block of those Victorian houses. You'd do the whole block. <laughs> yeah, but that would be made up in subcontractors. Hey? Or maybe subcontractors. No, I think he employed them direct. Hey. Well, you can get rid of them for you. Just down. All all right? Yeah, they'll be lovely. Well, you can take those on temporary then. That's what I meant. But he had a lot of craftsmen on. I said, I gave you a copy of that, I think, because I found his cash book. Now he had. I don't uh, think I got a copy, I think I saw it. I 50 men. Best man he unemployed regularly. Best man he on it was Harvey. He had 50 <laughs> men, George, on. Yeah. Uh, carpenters, yeah. joiners, upholsters, all skilled men. 50. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Do you know what their wages were for a week? 80 quid. For the line. For 50 men. Oh, for the lot? Yeah. A lot of money, right? This is about 1912. He must have had a huge yeah. turnover, though, must oh, he? Oh, yeah. With, with that sort of amount of people. And mm. So what did he do with all the money he made? He must have made a lot of money. What he did. Right? He made, I mean, he buying cars, wasn't he, and all sorts oh, yeah. of stuff. And he bought Brooklyn, and he had bought other places. Oh, he spent it, and... Uh, well, then, then, no, he lost it all in the 30s when the Depression Yeah, was. yeah. And the business went down like that. 20, yeah. 29, was it? 1929, I think. What? Depression year. Here, yeah. Well, it went for four years, wasn't it? Was it four years? Crumpet, yeah? Crumpet. No, he was, uh, no, 1929 was the Wall Street crash. Uh, it's in America, of course. And then here it was in the 30s, and it just went down and down and down. And at the same time, which is unfortunately, old man, whereas all the... Uh, houses above the shops were rather amazing. That he was told he had to uh, modernise it, so he turned it into five flats. Right. And of course, that cost a fortune. So he had to get bank loads, and of course he down. And then time he finished them all. Yeah, which left. property was that? Uh, in Sussex Place. Twenty eight. You know, because he was in Sussex. You know where, above, the, where Lottie was above Lottie. No, not above yeah. Lottie. It's his no. side. Oh, his side. The right. builder's side. Above yeah. thirty seven. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dad used to go abroad, Phil. Well done, you know, more trips abroad. And he went to Rome and places. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but he took all the family up to Scotland in those old cars before the First War. You've seen the pictures of them, haven't you? I have. I yeah. thought he drove George around. Well, there's a picture of him with Brother John. George? George, Uncle George. He used to say... He used to be friendly with John at Winchester and, jo and George, didn't he, his yeah. brother? Oh, yeah, they were the three close. of us. Yeah. When we were about six years old, you say, Uncle George got a licence, remember? Mm. I don't know who ever bought that. Learning. Uncle George got a licence. He was learning to drive, wasn't he? Hey? I remember that, learning Cold to drive. Street, yeah. Street, I bought Sussex Place, because up to that time, all round Paddington Station, it was like a village. They had sheep grazing down by Paddington Station at that Did time. They? When was that? In 1830. 1830. You can't yeah. remember it. No, and then that's it. So anyway, they, it was all built, and including the shop, they were all built in the 30s, 1830s. They had 99-year leases on them right. in all the big Victorian houses. Well, consequently, all those leases fell in in the 1930s as the wars come into horses. Yeah. So what happens is they get onto the paddock, and of course the very wealthy people own those big Victorian houses, you know, with 20-odd servant seats they had in those houses. I remember seeing the end of that. But of course they were told by the church commissioners who owned the properties 
that they wouldn't renew their leases for 99 years, they'd only give them a seven and eight year leases, or ten years. Which the old man right was ridiculous. Yeah. But, so they said, no, Sergeant, they, so they all, the war's coming, so they, most of them were in reserved um, our forces, if you like, officers, of course, Navy and all. And of course, all the families moved out to their country estates. They all had big country places. And so all the houses became empty, or most of those big squares. Yeah. Commandeered then? So the Ministry of Aircraft Production commandeered and took over the whole of High Park Gardens, 1 to 20, all those massive big houses, and they knocked doorways through on each floor, and the partition walls were three foot thick. Right. And they marked partitions for, so to make them into massive offices. Then Sussex Square, which was another big lot, all still old Victorian houses, taken over by the Army, 21st Army Group had that, the Rise and all that lot. Yeah. And uh, all other places like that. And then the ATS had them. Um, had one house. The ATS officers had one of the houses. So there was no work really then no. around that time. No, so so the houses, these were newish houses in two of those houses in Gloucester Square. They'd only been built. And so the ATS took over one of those for their officers. And lo and behold, into the shop one day comes this ATS officer, said to Anthony and that Lottie, My father has asked me to come in and send you his best wishes and say hello to my old bullet. And her father was Winston Churchill. Cool. You know, because he was um, Peter's daughter, Mary, I think it was, who was in the ATS. Yeah. And he especially, when he heard that she, where she was billeted, he said, go in and see the Miss Tuts and tell them... Really? Uh, yeah, Narrow Churchill? Because he, he lived in Sussex Square, you see, Yeah. Until he was in his 20s, and Churchill lived there, and then he remembers coming in there himself all those years previously. What was his famous, what was his famous daughter, Churchill, the one that was in the film? Yeah, I can't remember. She had a fingernail pulled out. Who did? Uh, Churchill thought her. She interned, wasn't she? Who was she? That's your that's your father that's used to that's talk that's to you or David number. about yeah, delivering newspapers to Mr. Hartog oh, across Hyde Park somewhere yeah. when he was a child yeah, and meeting, meeting Queen Victoria. Now, people say. You know the old saying, my father knew Lloyd George, don't they? Well, I can, we can say that our father knew Queen Victoria, because when he used to, when he was teens in the 1870s, 1880s, not long ago, is it? he used to be walking over at Hyde Park, go over the Serpentine Bridge, the big Serpentine Bridge, and quite often in the morning, coming towards him with his coach and horses, a carriage, and in it was Queen Victoria and her daughter, Princess Beatrice. And my father, being a well brought up lad, he'd stand by the bridge there and he'd stop while the carriage went by and he'd raise his cap, he wore a cap. And Queen Victoria, he always I remember him telling us, and she turned, Queen Victoria was quite a large lady, he said, she turned right round like that and, and acknowledged him, bow back to him. He was always very chuffed about that. Okay. You know, Queen Victoria. But he didn't have and a she'd be on her way to Kensington Palace where Diana ultimately. Albert was dead then. Hey. Albert. Oh, Albert was dead then. He's still dead now. He went yeah. over, went over to um, <laughs> what he got house, didn't he? Over in the Isle of Wight. Oh, I was born, yeah. Born I must get out there again. That's worth seeing that old one. You've been there all the while, haven't you? Yeah. yeah so we've been there, Mum and I. We went over with Andrew. We went right in, didn't we, Andrew? Yes. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. They've done it up there, exactly as it was. Because they, didn't they know, uh, just going back to Sussex Place, wasn't it known as Quality Street back in those days? Is that what they referred to in the newspaper? They said it was... Uh, Quality Street, it was known as, wasn't it? Round Hyde Park and well, so Sussex it could have been, Place. Yeah, it was because there was a lot of gentry lived oh, there. Oh, it was a very elite area, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, one of the wealthiest areas in the world, that was, in the country. What a lovely spot to live, though. I mean, even though I, I went out there for my operation, was up there, I don't know how long, two or three months in London? Remember, no. yeah, where did, where did Interesting, Ryan really, isn't it? Yeah. What? Where, where did Jane Ryan come from? Oh, she came from her father. Yeah. His father was Charles <laughs> Ryan. I know, but. They weren't both, both born in the post office. Where did they must have been some other house somewhere? Jane was born in the post office, wasn't she? Yeah. Jane, 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 Jane was born yeah, in the post office. Where did the tuck come from originally? First. Tom, Tom Tuck from down here. Yeah. Wishford. Tom Tuck was from here, yeah. from Wishford. Let and me he... tell you quickly what happened. Charles, Charles Ryan was born in Edinburgh and he came down to London and opened the post office in 1840, right? 1839-40. That's Charles Ryan. Well, he met and married... Georgiana. Georgiana Wright. He met... Georgiana Jane Castle. Yeah, he married Georgiana Castle, right? That's, that's Charles Ryan. They, in turn, had a daughter called Jane. 
to see Jane Rhine, obviously. Well then, Tommy Tuck went up from Wishford to live in Maribyrn, next to Paddy from Maribyrn, and he met up with Jane Rhine, and they got married, but they joined the business was called just Rhine then, and then they called it Rhine to Untouch. And that's how it started. Now I think Tommy Tuck must be very enterprising, because he came from the village of Wishford, in the 18, early 1860s, he came up to Maribyrn, got himself a flat there, and he worked in a very large stationery in suppliers in the city. And, and that was his job. And then Jane Ryan uh, used to go down there for her mother from Sussex Place to get stationery for the shop. That the was Paternoster Row, wasn't and, it? Uh, and old, yes, Paternoster Row. And uh, Tommy Tutty, who yeah. Tommy Tutty worked there, he used to chat her up. And then they went and met and used to go for walks in Hyde Park. Then one day a customer came in to uh, the mother and said, what a handsome young man your daughter's going out with. <laughs> she said, she didn't know because she was supposed to be at church, you see. <laughs> so she said, so she confronted the daughter and she said, you better bring him home. So Tommy Tuck was brought back to Sussex Place and put up the drawing room and meet the folks. And, and they got married in 1866. And in fact, a lot of the in the family going back. That was it, the Pitten. Though. George. We were just Tuts, weren't they? Who are? The ones at Pitten were just Tuts. Tuts, yeah. Yeah, they descend from Tom Tut's brother. Yeah. Um, they weren't right Tuts, were they? Was it George, I think, or John? I can't remember. I was there were the other Tuts out there. What was that other Tut who had a load of kids? Sort of the one who got in trouble. There was the Winchester Tuts, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, no, there, there was. Like, there was the Farley Tuts. Oh, there was Farley, the New, yeah. New Zealand Tuts. Mm. Yeah, it was Jack, Jack Tut, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And they live in Netherhampton. They live down at the big house in Netherhampton. He got prosecuted because he used to collect rents and he... That's right. Yeah. yeah he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't collect all He used to take his bonus from them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think about that other... Very often we used to go to Pitton on Sunday night, though, didn't we? Go on, George. We used to go to Pitton on Sunday nights, didn't we? Remember them? Not Pitton, we used to go down here.